This is the Horse Radio Network. Greetings, everyone. Coach Jen here, and thanks for tuning in to Horse Tip Daily, episode 1392, where Piper Clem, publisher of the Plaid Horse Magazine and host of the Plaidcast podcast here on Horse Radio Network, talks about the equestrian-focused college courses that she teaches and why they are a good fit for every demographic. Today's episode is brought to you by Purina Omega Match. Hey, listen up, horse owners. If your horses can't get out on green grass for their daily dose of omegas, Purina's got you covered. The Purina team of PhD equine nutritionists have two new products that are rich in omega-3 fatty acids and taste better than many other sources. We're looking at you, fish oil. Try the new Purina Omega Match Timothy-based ration balancer or ahi flower oil supplement and see for yourself why these are among some of the best omegas that nature offers. It takes science and love together, each pulling their weight to help your horses live their best lives. Put our research to the test at PurinaMills.com slash Omega Match. I'm very happy to be hanging out here with Piper Clem, who is the chief cook and bottle washer at the Plaid Horse Magazine and also the intrepid host of the Plaid cast here on Horse Radio Network. Welcome to Horse Tip Daily, Piper. Thank you for having me. You have been chatting about the college courses taught by Dr. Piper Clem for two semesters now. Is this the second or third semester you've done these? Yep. Uh, We did them last summer. So we did a a summer semester last summer and we are starting again this summer. Yep. And I got to thinking because I am not a college graduate. And for folks who aren't, who don't have their radar on college, might hear that ad or read about it in the Plaid Horse magazine and go, oh, you know, I'm not college bound or I'm not a recent graduate, so they pass it by. But when I read the topics that you guys are going to be discussing, I realized that, wait a minute, this is for everybody. So I wanted to find out, why did you decide to do college courses that address equestrians specifically? Um, absolutely. Well, there, there are a couple factors that went into this. Um, one of the things is I am an avid reader. I encourage other people all the time to read. I often assign other people reading or podcasts to listen to or the like. And um, it always annoyed me when people asked me for advice and I would tell them what to do. And then I'd follow up and they'd be like, oh, yeah, I got busy or something like that. And so to be able to give people exams on the reading that I gave them um, is a horse dream of mine. Um, I would make everyone read textbooks all the time if I could. Learning about our sport, I think, is amazing. And I think it makes you better at everything you do. Um, There's so much opportunity to recognize. There's opportunity to embrace. There's opportunity to walk away from. Um, This industry is so confusing. There's so many moving parts. There's so much going on. And really wrapping it up in a college course and having some hierarchy, I thought, made a lot of sense. Um, My husband's a chemistry professor. And um, every year, new first year college students come in and they take general chemistry and then they take organic and then they take inorganic and analytical and there's a complete hierarchy of chemistry. So it's like the sophomores, there's an assumption that they learn something their first year in general chemistry when they're taking organic chemistry. My experience in the horse world is you're just thrown in the deep end of the pool (laughs) and people are like, how do you not know what X is? And you're like, well, when would I have learned that? Um, there's there's this assumption that everyone has all this knowledge, but there's no hierarchy in how we're learning it and how to put it together and how it makes sense. Um, so I went into the three aspects of the industry that I thought that we could make most impact for young people taking for their whole lives. Um, and so the first was um, a history and history of equestrian sport and how our divisions evolved and who the old people are. And, and it really evolved. It actually evolved from a podcast. Um, we had Jimmy Lee on and he was like, kids these days don't know who Rodney Jenkins is. And I was like sitting there and I was kind of like, but like our children supposed to just like pull the name Rodney Jenkins. Yeah, are they supposed to know that by magic? Um, by magic? <laughs> like how were, who is teaching them who Rodney Jenkins is? Who is, um, you know, 
who is assigning them reading that they're not doing? Oh, wait, no one. We just, we don't give them the information and then we blame them for not having it, which is how I feel that we approach horsemanship and a lot of other things today. So um, I believe that we should blame the children after they have been assigned a reading and failed to do it. <laughs> give um, me a not- chance to fail before you call me out on it, please. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Um, so this is my my chance on that. And I think that so many people should learn about the great in our sport, in, in all equestrian sports and some of these um, great horses and the great thoroughbreds and show jumping and um, all the different aspects of how the sport and the regulations and, and the different facets work together and why they evolved how they did and how um, the issues we have in our sport, you know, kind of evolved organically and, and they did not evolve from people being malicious. They involve they evolved from one decision on top of another decision, and everyone thought that they were making the best decision they could with the data they had at the time. And then you kind of veer off track at some point, and 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 you get really lost before it starts getting corrected. So I, I really want people to learn the history and the basis of our sport. So that's so important to me going forward. And you know, all the classic cliches of history repeating itself. Training a horse hasn't really changed. Approaching the sport fundamentally has not really changed. And there's so much to learn from the masters. So that's the the synopsis of that course. Um, the next course is about grit and teaching and learning and coaching. And it's a, based on a lot of coping mechanisms and a lot of skills that I developed in my 20s. I did not develop them in my teens. I did not feel like we had a lot of really productive conversations about sports psychology and the like when I was younger. We're having so much better conversations now. It's amazing. I love having Tanya Johnson on the podcast. Um, we have great people and great books like Daniel Stewart. Um, there's uh, brain training for riders. There's um, human head, horse head, I think is what that one, the other one's called. Um, and so there's so many great books out there. There's so much great stuff to study. And really evaluating what your coping mechanisms are. Everyone is awful at this sport. Everyone's horses break down. Everyone's management system fails. Everyone's car breaks down. They struggle to get to the horse show. Like they rent the wrong place. They accidentally, you know, (laughs) whatever. Someone gets shot in the lobby of the hotel (laughs) that they chose. It's it's always, that's right. Um, Yes, we we all need so many coping skills on so many levels of the the sport. We need competition ring coping skills. We need like physically getting to the horse show, like traveling coping skills. We need time management coping skills to balance all the other things we have going on, to drop everything, to go to a horse show all day where time is just like sucked away like a vacuum. Um, there's so, so many coping mechanisms we need and so many aspects. And so that course really goes from like how to get the most out of lessons to preparing yourself mentally and emotionally in a competition all the way through how to teach others, how to help others the best, how to be supportive. Um, I've found that so many people trying to be supportive of me has created a lot of pressure, which is hard for me. Um, And people's like attempts in being nice have been like, you know, really invaded like my personal space a lot um, and and even just how to handle stuff like that. So um, all these courses are tailored to who's in the class and what issues that everyone is dealing with individually. So, so there's, there's some catering of all of that, but there, there's so many skills that we all could have about how to handle criticism better and how to handle coaching and tough coaching and your coach really caring about you and really holding you to a high standard and high expectations. We can all manage those feelings um, that we have better. So in our heads, we're not going like, screw you. We're like, let's achieve something better together because you're being hard on me because you know I can do it and dig in and let's find this extra gear that we didn't know was here. Um, And then the third class is a business class. It is an equestrian business class. It is the who, what, when, where. It's knowing your numbers. It's how different equestrians go about running their business. And it's something that I wish everyone could take um, all the time. Like there's so many old equestrians, we all know them that have no retirement savings and never really thought about it, or maybe weren't insured when something came down the pipeline or didn't have their eyes dotted and their T's crossed. And that's because they love horses and they're great at being at the barn. And I respect the skills they have so much, but you ne- if you're going to own your own business, you need the business skills. It needs to be set up. Well, you need to know where every dollar is. You need to know what your loss leaders are. You need to know where your profit margins are. You need to know who is a legitimate 
potential who has legitimate potential for being repeat customer repeat business for your business and who doesn't you know if you're cutting someone a break the first time because you expect them to come back are they really someone who's going to come back and and we rely a lot of our industry on repeat business and that makes sense sometimes and not other times um you know, and really just relating things to to luxury markets and how people make decisions and how you can make better decisions yourself, how you can organize and structure your own spending to maximize what you get, what risks you're taking here, there, and everywhere. We talk a lot about horse sales, which I love. <laughs> I love talking yeah, about that's how always horse a hot sales topic are. there. Yeah, <laughs> always a hot topic. When's the best time of year to buy a horse to pay the most for it? When's the best time of year to buy a horse to pay the least for it? You know, how to get a deal, how to you know raise your risk and raise your potential reward, how to lower, you know, lower your risk, but lower your potential reward, um, all of this stuff. And, and the fundamental thing about this industry is there are no right answers for anything. It's all about having the data, knowing how to look at the data, knowing how to have the data and making the decision that's right for you and yourself and your family and that that's really what it's all about so i'm not preaching like oh there's a right way to do it in a wrong way i do things very differently than other people it's what works for me i took all the data and i said this is what makes sense for my lifestyle and it's not how other people would do it and nor do i think it's how other people should do it um but there's having the data and and knowing who to you know that there's no kelly blue book like no one tells you how much a horse should be no one there's no comps like other barns are not sharing their bills with you so that you're making rational decisions um it's knowing who has the data if you don't have it is just as big of a skill in our sport as being able to analyze and 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 go through the data so part of all three courses are really networking people networking with other professionals and other people, professionals in all aspects of the industry, not just riding, um, and, and interacting with people so that students come out of the class knowing that even if they don't know the answer to something or they don't know how something works, they probably will know the person at the end of the class to ask or to email or to ask a question of. Um, and I think it's such an important part because people, when people get lost in our sport, they really have nowhere to go. And I think that's when they like turn to Facebook or like <laughs> the wrong place, the wrong place. Yeah. See, there are wrong answers. The there wrong are. place to go for yeah. solid business advice is social media. <laughs> <laughs> so really what this course is, is going to be doing for people who are in any way, shape or form interested in creating a better horsey and business life for themselves and their families is you're going to go from you realize you don't have the answer. You re- you know what the question is, but you haven't the foggiest idea how to get to the answer. And then you're going to end up with, I don't know that answer. I know I need to get the answer. And this is how I go about getting the For answer. Sure. And, and so many of these are like, you know, very simple discussions. You know, you see someone and they get a horse for $5,000 and they tell you it's an investment horse. And then, you know, you're like, okay, but you've had that horse for two years. You know, it, like if board and training say $1,000 a month just have an easy calculation, like is that horse worth $30,000? Is that horse going to be worth $30,000? Right. Was it genuinely a, a, an investment yeah. horse or was it really a horse that you enjoyed training? That, Which is fine. That you, yes. in the end, when you sell it, you spent a little bit less on it you you got some of your investment back. There's a difference. You're right. Yes. Right. Which is fine. Can, and you know, recognize and, the and, difference. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And if you if that's how you want, you know, you can also look at it the other way. You can look at it of like I would have spent ten thousand dollars a year to lease this horse, which would be twenty thousand dollars plus all the horses expenses down the drain. Instead, I bought the horse for five, I sold it for fifteen. Same the expenses were gonna go down the drain either way in the lease or the sale and so for a plus 10, you know, instead of two years of leasing of minus 20, I'm better off, you know, then there's so many different risk factor, factors to evaluate and, and, and so many different pieces um, and, and just being realistic on what things are and aren't. And, you know, we have so many people, I have so many people that say to me like, oh, uh, I'm going to buy because I don't like throwing money away leasing but there is a price point where it's cheaper to lease when you actually do all the calculations of exit commissions and buying the horse commissions because obviously if you're paying a commission on the total cost your commission on say a 
$50,000 purchase is much more than a $15,000 lease. And, you know, there's two commissions for buying and selling, whereas the lease, there's a single commission. Um, if your trainer is advising you to lease for a year and not purchase, they are screwing themselves financially. So it, they must really think it's a good idea. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. And, and this, um, that, that whole concept applies to every um, social and economic strata. You can yes. take those zeros off, Every but the oh, but yes. the theory and you can still add applies. Zeros to it, yep, you can add zeros to it. You can take zeros off. This is a high risk, high right. reward sport, no matter how you do it, and right. um and and it's a lot of fun. And we want you to be in this industry forever. I want people to be rational enough financially that they can enjoy horses their whole lives and be part of the Horse Radio Network and listen to the podcast and be part of the family their whole lives because they don't run out of money in a year by doing something stupid. I mean, right. that's really my right. goal in all or, of it. And or feel um, ostracized because one yep. of some of the things that you touch on in your courses is how there can be bias yep. at every shame. level. Yep, and there's shame. shame at every level of at this every sport. level, and you talk you talk every about that level. frankly, and you talk about it a lot on the podcast. As a matter of fact, some of my favorite conversations, yep. and talk about it very openly, frankly, and without malice. Yep, which is yep. my favorite part. Is it's it's there. Getting angry about it isn't going to help solve the problem. Let's talk about how we can solve the problem. So again, all these courses have stuff in them for every human being on Earth. They just yes. happen to be taught by and are geared toward horse people so that examples are going to be horse related because this makes me think back to elementary school and you had to do math problems and they always had the word problems about the train leaving the station if they had told me that um jeffrey left on thunderbolt he left the barn at a trot at 4.5 miles per hour (laughs) if they had told me that i probably would have paid more attention (laughs) absolutely these are all using horse examples and these are skills that can go into any, any scenario. Um, the other thing I would say is last year we got a bunch of parents taking the courses, which was really exciting. Parents whose kids had started riding and they wanted to learn more and, and navigate the sport better. Um, and I absolutely loved having the parents and, and their perspective um, in the courses. So I really encourage um, parents to be part of it. Uh, people of all ages, we had um, trainers, we had uh young people who wanted to get the college credit to transfer. We had current college students um, getting the credit to transfer. So it, it was really a mix among um, all ages. And I think that that's one of the most beautiful things in our sport is that everyone is welcome. And, and we do have legitimate friendships that span age groups that you would almost never get in, in regular life. Well, there you go. Well, where can people sign up for these courses? Theplathorse.com slash college has more information and you can get to the registration link there for the Clarkson University equestrian courses. There we go. And if you enjoyed Piper's passionate discussion about being a smarter human being, then you need to tune into the Plaidcast and you can find the Plaidcast by going to Plaidhorse.com, the Plaidhorse.com. The links are there. You can find those links on Horse Radio Network, etc. You can just Google the Plaidcast or the Plaid Horse Magazine, and you'll find it. She has great SEO because she's smart. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me, Jen. And that about wraps it up. You can find links to today's guests and topics at horsetipdaily.com. Thank you again to today's sponsor, Purina Mills. You can find out more about their new product, Omega Match, at purinamills.com slash Omega Match. This is Coach Jen, and I will be back again soon with another tip. Until then, go ride your horse. The Horse Radio Network and the Horse Radio Network hosts are not responsible for statements made by guests on the Horse Tip Daily. Please use your own judgment when listening to the tips on this show. 